GOG is the premier place to buy older PC titles, and their promise is DRM-free games. What isn't widely known is that GOG also hosts Linux versions of games that have official Linux ports. Those Linux versions of games will work on Steam Deck guaranteed, but what about the older Windows titles? Will they work under Proton or Wine? PlayStation or Xbox? PC. Oh wow! Yeah. Good Old Games, primarily GOG, is a storefront in which they sell older PC titles. Titles such as Secret Monkey Island, Fallout, Ultima even. You'd be hard-pressed to find those anywhere else. There's a dirty little secret within Windows, it's that Windows isn't even fully compatible with all of their titles. Yet somehow Linux is better with older games than modern Windows operating systems are. So there are various methods to install GOG games, the easiest of which is to just go to their website and go to your library, or buy some games first, your call. And as you can see here, I have quite the selection of games on GOG, despite the fact that I've never spent a single dollar in this store. So here, you can see right there, Absolute Drift has a Linux version, and it automatically detects that I'm running on Linux. Let's see, Control doesn't have a Linux version, doesn't even have a Mac OS version. You can download it still. Let's pick another game. Let's pick... Ooh, FTL. I haven't played this game in years. So FTL, Linux version. As you can see here, on Linux, it's literally as easy as it would be on Windows. You just click on the game installer, you download it, and then once it finishes downloading, you install it. Okay, so it's not as simple as downloading it and running it as expected. Because Linux things, right? Like, you know, you have to... Go right click the executable file. No, it's not an executable file yet, but you right click it, you go into properties, you go to permissions, you make sure that you click is executable. No, that's not the button. That's not the button either. There we go. That's the button right there, right there. So now you can execute it. You'll find the installation process is very, very similar to how you would install programs on Windows. You just keep clicking next, you read a bunch of stuff that you're probably not going to read anyways. You accept their license. Yeah, and that's how you accept the license. Just like that. Now the tricky part is learning the Linux file system and how things are arranged, but if you just go with the default, you'll be fine. As you can see there, it even puts a little desktop icon on your desktop, just in case you want to, you know, run games off your desktop. Just like Windows. And as you can see here, the game works well within reason. As you, everything works just fine, turn on the advanced content, press start, and then try not to die. It's cool that you can install Linux games on a Linux operating system, but what about a Windows game? Well... I'm glad you asked, because I prepped here a Windows installer of Mountain Blade from GOG as well. As you can see here, it's even easier than installing a Linux game. Just download the executable, run it, and then install the game. So yes, I agreed to the EULA, whatever. Now you can go into options, you can set your install directory. You can set it wherever, basically. But... It's advisable you go into your root folder of Linux. Sometimes it'll be labeled as Z. So you go into, no, that's not it. That's not it either. Go back. There. So you go into Z, you go into home, you go into your user, and then you pick a folder in there. And then that's your installation process. So this game took quite a bit to install. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and skip the process. So Mountain Blade just finished downloading, so I'm going to go look for it in the directory because it doesn't make a shortcut to your desktop. Not when you're installing a Windows title. So typically you have to look for the EXE of the game, and if you don't know what that is, then I don't know what to tell you. But as you can see there, a launcher popped up and you can just play Mountain Blade. I'm not going to watch the cutscenes, I'm going to be quite honest with you. All things considered, the game loaded up pretty quickly. So let's go play a quick battle. And we're just going to do that, we're going to do that. We're going to kind of read it, and then we're going to go straight into battle. And wow, it kind of lags on my computer, but like I said, this testing laptop isn't really a gaming computer, so it was to be expected. The game, well, aside from a few FPS issues due to the fact that my laptop kind of sucks, it runs. It looks like it runs as I would expect on Windows, and I've never played Mountain Blade before, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm pretty sure just standing there and stabbing people is not how you play the game. As you can see here, just downloading and installing the games on their own works just fine. The question though is, what if you want like a launcher? I think the answer is pretty obvious. Don't get GOG Galaxy. Unless you absolutely need the multiplayer framework to play multiplayer on like, oh I don't know, Stardew Valley, then honestly there's no real reason to get GOG Galaxy, especially when its Halo feature is being an all-in-one launcher. Especially when Lutris is the all-in-one launcher and also, also the most recommended way to download and install games of all storefronts. And the fact that you can just log onto your GOG account right there and just download the games, it's quite good. It's so good you don't even need GOG Galaxy. And it's so easy that, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really need to demonstrate it because it's almost as easy as installing a game on Steam. I suppose the issue then becomes, how do I integrate this into the Steam OS launcher? Well, it's quite easy, you can just add non-Steam games to your Steam library the same way you would, except for Windows titles, you'll have to browse to where the EXEs are located. That's literally it. 